I have here the Laua Argus 35 millimeter F.95 lens. We're gonna walk around, take some shots. I'm gonna give you some tips along the way and tell you what I think about it. My name is Pai, and I'm one of the founders of Lynn and Jersa Photography and SLRLounge.com. We're teaming up with Adorama to bring you a new series of photography tutorials called Master Your Craft right here on Adorama TV. So let's dive in. What's up, friends? My name is Pai. Welcome to Adorama TV. Welcome to my neighborhood. I kind of feel like Mr. I, I look like Mr. Rogers right now. Anyway, look, we're going to dive straight into this while we're kind of I'm going to give you some thoughts on the lens. I'm also going to give you some tips on using a manual focus lens. Let's get straight into it. I want to introduce you to Kiara. You guys remember Kiara. We will link her up so you guys can give her a follow. But check this out. Kiara, I'm going to have you stand actually right here by the tree. Just be tree like, you know, <laughs> like Christmas. It's Christmas time. So look, the first thing that I would recommend is I would suggest that you use a manual focus lens with a relatively new camera body just so you have things like focus peaking. So the first thing that I'm going to turn on is I'm going to go into my autofocus menu and right here in the AF menu I'm using the Canon R5 by the way. It's going to be similar depending on which model you have or if you have a different make just check out where you're going to get your uh, focus peaking settings. But from here I'm going to have peaking on and I like to make the level high so it's just bright and I'll usually choose yellow as the color. This is partly because I'm slightly colorblind and red kind of blends into things. I know, it's, that's another topic. But anyway, once focus peaking is on, then as I kind of get close to Kiara, I have this little aid. So as I turn the manual focus ring, if you guys can see the back of this viewfinder right here, you'll kind of see that it, it lights up when she's roughly in focus, okay? Cool. The next thing I would suggest that you do is also use the zoom. So you're going to use the zoom to kind of get into the eyes and make sure that you have critical focus. Let's get our first shot and just kind of talk and give you some tips along the way. So for this first shot, I have her leaning up against this tree and being like a tree and you're doing really good with that. I appreciate that. Um, what I'm going to do now is I have focus. And I want to press that zoom button to kind of pop in there and make sure that over the eye I have critical focus. Now for settings, I'm currently at one one thousandth of a second. It's not going to give you the aperture reading because I'm controlling aperture from the lens itself. So it's a manual aperture right here. So I've set it to 0.95. Honestly, if you're going to get a manual focus lens like this one, it's because you want the depth, right? You're not going to go and get this lens and be like, I'm going to shoot this at f7. That makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. So we're gonna keep this kind of wider. We're gonna be between 0.95 and maybe up to F2, but let's be honest, it's just gonna be 0.95 the whole time because we wanna see what it looks like. So I'm at 1 1,000th of a second. I'm looking at my histogram and I get a good exposure with low ISO and 1 1,000th of a shutter and at 0.95 on my aperture. So from here, what I'm gonna do is this. Look, one of the things that I like to do and, and these are all like kind of preferential things. You could take a shot like this and it looks okay, but you notice the feet are kind of cropped off. Now I could go wide and kind of get the entire body into the shot. And this is okay too, but oftentimes I like to step in a little bit and actually compose. So lean against the tree like how you were before and with the legs kind of crossed like that, that's it right there. And what I'll do is actually crop at the thigh. And what we want to do is crop in the narrowing point. So it kind of looks like the legs are kind of going narrow as they exit the, the frame, right? So from here, I'm going to set my crop right about there. Perfect. So why did I pick this scene? This has this like cobblestone in the background and we have the sun kind of coming through this area. So with the cobblestone, even though we're in California and kind of in the middle of a, a neighborhood, it kind of has this vibe of being in an old town area. Let's keep moving. I, I want to do a bunch of photos with this. Let's keep moving. Okay, we're here. <laughs> so <laughs> what I want you to do, Kiara, is actually come down right here and this fence kind of gives us a chance to just kind of see what the depth looks like a little bit. Okay, so when we're shooting with this lens, you can see how we're slowing down quite a bit. 
this is not going to be a lens that you get to shoot journalistically that you're you know running around doing sports and that kind of stuff with you're going to make your life really difficult doing that and unless you like artistically blurry photos probably not a good idea so it's really a portrait lens now what i'm thinking originally was this wider composition that you can see right here the problem is that we get a lot of the street and the lights but i like this low angle because we get to use the bush to kind of frame and create a little bit of depth so what I'm gonna do is get down a little bit lower and go to a vertical composition. And then I'm gonna bring that zoom right into the face. So as I press the magnifying glass, it's just jumping into the face to make sure that I have critical focus. Then right here, perfect. Here, bring the hand down to the arm. Your left hand, there it is. Yes, relax it. A little bit more, there. Love it. Chin down a little bit, eyes into me. Those have such a cool vibe to them. Okay, this looks kind of lame. Just bear with me, okay? All we have here on the left is this hedge that's kind of dropping into the vanishing point. We have a sidewalk, grass, and some trees. But what's cool about this is we have this scene that has a lot of depth because all the vanishing points, if we shoot in the center, are gonna drop into the center. So I'm gonna place Kiara in the middle. We're gonna really see what this lens can do in terms of making a very plain scene look better. So notice this, it's cloudy, but we do have a bit of sun coming through. And what I'm doing is placing Kiara in a spot where there's a bit more light, right? So she's gonna be right there. We have this nice little tree behind her. And what I'm gonna do is get to a place in the frame where I can kind of lower down a little bit and have all these lines dropping into her. So let's come down right here. Okay, now I'm zooming into her face to get that critical focus. And from right there, that's it. Perfect. The focus peaking is absolutely critical. It looks really cool. I'm gonna get a little bit closer so we see a little bit more fall off in the background. I'm gonna stay up a little bit higher just to kind of let the vanishing points drop in a little bit more right around the face, that's it. I want you guys to compare one thing. So what I wanna do is, is show you guys, there's a little compositional trick that I used here. And one, we had her standing in this lighter area, right? But you'll notice from the photograph that the background, because we have more shade in the background, the background becomes a little bit darker. So what this ends up doing is helping our, our subject to kind of pop a little bit. And I'll show you the difference. If I actually walk her to a brighter, or actually we'll put her in the shade, like right in here, and we'll brighten up everything around her. Okay, so now I'm gonna brighten the exposure to get her bright again. And what we end up with is, is this shot. And it's not to say that this shot is necessarily wrong. There really isn't a right or wrong, but what I feel in this second shot is that it's a little bit less I don't know, it's less editorial, less oomphy, and all we're really doing, oomphy is, yes, a technical word, all we're really doing is just pushing her into the light more so we get more light on the face, so we can darken the background, versus putting her in the shadows and having to brighten the image, and then we kind of get a more blown background. So when you see those images side by side, the ones that we were doing a second ago, they just have more of a produced feel. They look more editorial, they look more professional, if you will, but it's a very small tip. I mean, we only move just 15 feet. Either way though, you can see from this scene, such a plain and average scene, the lens is doing a lot of the heavy lifting and creating a really interesting shot. I love the characteristics of this lens. Let's keep walking, talking, getting some more shots. I just save Viet from stepping in a big pile of you know what. So don't say I don't love you. All right, so one of my things when it comes to lenses is I find that so much of the, the, the shift in lens technology is towards you know, sharper and more perfect and technically just edge to edge flawless and all this kind of stuff. I personally love lenses that have character. I love lenses that have unique ways of rendering light and kind of depth and all these interesting things. And what most people would say is that these are, I mean, they are actually imperfections, but I find those imperfections they really lend to a certain style of work. And so I like to choose lenses that fit my style of work. This is one of those lenses that has just that. It has very unique characteristics, very unique ways of rendering depth that makes it 
just awesome. It's a lens full of character. And maybe this sounds like hogwash to some of you. You guys want technically perfect, but I absolutely love this kind of stuff. I think it ties really well into a photographer developing their style and creating a set of images that are just unique to them. So yeah, I'm kind of impressed. This lens has character and I love it. I like, I like this. What I'm thinking in this is that once Chiara is standing underneath the shade in this spot, the bridge kind of gives us this directional light that comes in, but the concrete will actually kind of act like a studio backdrop. So it'll have a very studio look to it. It'll also allow us to not only play with light a bit and depth, but then to see the kind of vignetting characteristics of this lens. So let's actually get in here and take a few shots and let's also be careful to bike. So I actually bike on this trail. There are a lot of bikers. <laughs> let's be polite to the bikers. Okay, yeah, I like that. So we're about six, seven feet into this where we have a nice bit of just this light fall off. So the light's kind of bright on this side and falling into this side. And let's go ahead and get our exposure. I'm gonna be at one one thousandth ISO 100. And I do wanna cool down my, I like to shoot warm, but right now it's a bit too warm. I want this one to feel a little more cool. No, <laughs> I mean, yeah, color temperature is too warm. I'm gonna go down to 5200 Kelvin. And I'm also gonna frame Kiara towards this right side of the frame to sort of give uh, a little bit of room on the left side where the, the light can kind of darken a bit. Straight up like a studio. I love that. I, I actually shot these a little bit on the bright side, not because this is where I intend it to be, but I'm just kind of getting the brightest image possible without really um, you know, blowing out any highlights or clipping any shadows. And what I intend to do is actually darken the image a bit and to use the highlights on the skin to lift the skin out of the shot. It's gonna look really cool. For now though, Kiara, stay right there. I'm gonna get another shot. Um, let's just, yeah, you be on that side, we'll be on this side. This will let the bikers come through. Yeah, we're good. <laughs> Kiara's terrified of the bikers. In fact, we should keep this real. You're good, guys. We'll keep this real. We'll show the shot of Kiara seeing the bikers when she, the first time. They blaze through. They blaze through. Yeah. They, this is the, the fun part. Okay. So this is interesting because if I shoot the shot wide like this, it's gonna have a very urban feel to it. And, and I like that look to be honest, but it's completely up to you. If you want it to look more studio, less urban, then all we would do is just crop in a little bit so that we're not showing the other areas of texture, right? So what I might do is if I wanted to look more polished and more studio is I would have Kiara step to this side yeah, and then what I'm gonna do is have you lean up against the wall. There you go. I want you to kind of look towards the light direction. Kind of go chin down a little bit. And then what we would do is kind of step into her and just show less of the scene itself of where we're at. Okay, so as we see less of what's going on around her, then it kind of doesn't look like we're in this urban environment so much as it looks like we're just against a backdrop. Those are fun. The last shot that I want to do is actually this shot right here. I'm placing Kiara kind of right in the center of this bridge, okay? We're gonna get this lowered angle where you'll see the, the ceiling and everything kind of just pulling into her. And the last thing that I'm gonna do, last and final tip, clean up the junk. So all this little stuff that's stuck to this. Okay, so now I'm low to frame her against the concrete, the solid concrete background. I'm keeping her centered because this scene works really nicely with this composition. And then I'm having her look towards the light because it gets a really nice shape on the face. Man, this lens has such great characteristics. I love this. What I'm gonna do is get a little bit closer on this one too. It has a really great look to it. And Kara, what you can do is lean actually forward from the hip towards me. Yes, more, 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 more. Now look down to that shoulder. So this little lean that she's doing towards me helps to kind of correct the angle. 
I didn't think I would like this lens as much as I do. I got it just to do this review, but I feel like I'm gonna end up buying this lens. I love the overall characteristics of it. Shooting at 0.95 has a really great look and overall depth. You get this great vignetting. And as you guys can see, it really made a lot of very average scenes. So I'm more than impressed, especially at the $900 price point. Now just keep in mind, that this lens is meant for certain things. You're not gonna buy this lens and probably shoot, you know, closed down. It's really meant for depth. It's a depth machine. But that also comes with drawbacks because as a manual focused lens, it's really not meant for anything moving. As you can see throughout our entire shoot, we had to work quite slow. And that means that it's meant for really more of portraits or static, you know, subject still life type shots. It's gonna be fantastic for, but anything on the journalistic side, movement side, even when it came to Kiara just walking, made our lives quite a bit more difficult. That on top of the fact that with a manual focus lens, you're gonna want a camera body that has features like focus peaking, the ability to kind of zoom in and zoom out quickly and make sure that you have critical focus. That's it. Hope you guys learned a bit about the lens, got some useful tips and tricks along the way. As always, we'd love for you to subscribe to the Adorama TV channel. Also, we have new videos going up daily. So if you guys wanna be notified, turn on notifications. It's also helpful to me if you wanna drop a thumbs up on the video, leave your comments. I do actually read them, get ideas. So that's super helpful too. You guys can follow me at Pai Jersa. You can also follow Kiara at I am Kiara Zayas, right? Okay, we'll link it all up. And we'll also link up the gear that we used in the description below the video. That's it, peace.